SUNY Hong, congratulations. One person show, a tremendous achievement, and this book, the work of mainly you, but also designers, photographers. Um, congratulations, it's been a long, long journey to get to tonight, but you did it. Congratulations, and um, let's talk about you and your art. Um, I'm gonna go way back. So, you're originally from South Korea, right? Yes. A uh, big city or town? Uh, outside, a small city. Mm -hmm. Musical, IRI city, but changing the name. And did you begin your art when you were a child or when yes. you were an adult? Yeah, mm -hmm. tell us about it. Um, when I was in the elementary school, in the school we had a um, big field where people put students together and they bring the fire truck and everyone will go out to drive fire, draw the fire truck and I won the first prize and I love that tension and then it just sparked something in me and, and uh, although none of my family was artistic and I was always different and I would I was, because of that, I think I was a very trained artist from very young. And in middle school, I think I remember I was a star of the state. And then in high school, I went with a scholarship in private high school. Uh, my tuition was waived. And then when I came to US in 19, then I entered school. And as soon as I changed majors from engineering to a, a art major, I was awarded with a scholarship. And so I went to school also through scholarship, even in the college. Congratulations. And you went to college in the United States, United right? States, yes. 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 Youngtown State University in Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. I went to, I majored in BFA and got a graphic degree. Then I came to New York after college, a little pit stop in DC where my family was. Then I came to New York and, and I started working in the fashion industry for five years. And during that time that I didn't know whether regular sleeve and set and sleeve take more fabric, so I got another degree in FIT, which I graduated later, but I was already a fashion designer. And I was hanging out with a bunch of artists always, and that's where I felt comfortable. And then take some classes or drawing classes in art students' league. Mm -hmm. And I was still doing single line drawing and things like that. And then eventually I left the business and to become a full artist, it just like took me a different route and I kind of stopped and restarted again and this is where a body of my work is. And in, in many ways, I think, now that you talk about the different nodes of training you had, all, all in the arts, but, but with fashion and graphics and stuff like that, we see that in the work. There, there is clearly an influence from graphic design, there's clearly an influence from some of the best that, that fashion brings. So you're not just the fine artist, you have brought into that everything you've learned and it becomes part of your visual vocabulary. Oh, also, the interesting part is that I've actually trained for a very long time in watercolor. I grew up in Atelier where college students, you know, they try to make extra money and I was one of those little girls who goes there to draw. So by the time I enter U.S. college, I was actually draw everybody in the I would draw every teachers in the class. Whenever I was bored, I would draw their back and front and face while they're lecturing. So some of those paid while I still kept it. Uh, yes. And there's a quality that, I'm gonna jump right to what I think is one of the most unique and most interesting things about you and your work, and then we'll get specific, but there's, many artists are really, you know, they, they wanna make a, specific, unique thing that just becomes static, where there's, with you, there's both an improvisational aspect to your work. Your work is very conceived, but there's also, you allow not only for discovery, but you allow for reinvention of your work. So, can you tell us about how in some of these pieces that are here in this show, you created them, and then they evolved over several yes. steps, which is, some of that is in, in your book, but to explain that in more depth, because I think that's fascinating. Yes, um, well, I think how it worked was when I went back to artwork after I stopped in for a while, 
I want to do something different, but given that I'm a traditional artist, that I, I actually entered U.S. college and learned to how to draw, not realistic. So what I did was one of those uh, palette knife paintings that I've done, and, and just finger painting, because I have already mastered the skill of watercolor. You can see some of the watercolor and uh, in a dog, mm -hmm. you see the watercolor techniques will come out, but I'm actually traditionally trained as an, 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 a watercolor painter where the mistakes are shown. So that's where you become a little bit precise while you improvise at the same time. So earlier on, when I went to that style, I wanted to do something different, but you can kind of tell a little bit of cubistic, but yet they're different. Because I was, I'm aware of all this history that yes. I studied, yes. and yet I want to be always be something one of kind. I was always known for unique. Even in Korea, my my head doesn't bow, and and my family would say, "Oh, she's an artist. She's from New York City. She's painter." Then it was, oh, they would say, "Oh, then I was accepted." So I am creating the same thing in that sense in artwork. And, but whatever I do is that uh, I just put myself 100% in it. Like when I paint, I paint 10 hours straight as May star and the last minute creating buckets. Like when I started spilling, I know it's time for me to quit. You mean in here in the guy? I did that. And, and one of the, the May is here. The homage to Korea was originally made. This, this one is right my here. latest work. And what after I went through all this of a centrist nature, an enigmatic void, of a self-discovery of center of myself, exploring myself. When I'm past through that stage, I invite to go to outside world. When I do so many work, I think I naturally need to change. I cannot do the same thing all the time. And also that if you notice some of my work, like the Dominion Empire up there, like I will do one abstract, one realistic simultaneously together. I will do some time together. And and I've always done that. If you look more subtly, you will see abstract and realistic together at the same Absolutely. time I put together or I put We're going to talk about that with some of those abstracts. But this one I did in the spot. This was just recently done, actually, as I delivered day before a year. And uh, I originally improvised this guy who want to send my artwork to Korea. And uh, but I thought it didn't pan out because they thought I should donate my artwork and pay shipping. So I said no. <laughs> but but my original improvised sketch was face was very large. I was thinking by myself, homies to go back to Korea. But Fled's design at the corner was not uh, visible enough in my eyes when I transferred the larger paper. So I did it here, and I couldn't figure it out. There was a blank space. But when I see that antenna of the butterfly, which by the way, it they are not gone. Yeah. My butterfly is not gone even in abstract. You will see an antenna of presence somewhere, always even in abstract. Why don't you go over to the painting and point out those things? So, uh, so, so when my original artwork is in the book, uh, the face is very large, the flags are very tiny, and, and uh, in the yang sign was very tiny. This is a Korean flag. If you put together these elements, that's a Korean flag and it's in a rectangular, if you, anybody who's aware of a Korean flag. So what I did is I made elements of design and keeping their three lines and broken lines of exactly like Korean flag. But uh, when I improvise, you can think of every aspect when you improvise. But when you look back, we are making bigger size, when you can see bigger, and I can see that's not right. And so at the end, I will always change from improvisation to another step. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to yin and yang to be a little bit noticeable. I want people to, certain people to notice there's a Korean flag there. This is a homage to Korea. Right. And so when I shrunk the face, uh, by now you probably know, one certain element comes out that I will always carry on for a while until I'm bored and I move on to new new elements who will stay there and carry on for different paintings. And then there's a space left over here. Then I realize if I go to Korea not in my face, but my body's going too. But I have not done any body in just a dot. 
Yeah. So I just uh, made this, I think, in front of Carlos and, and May, and while a bucket of paint started spilling, that I knew it was a bad time. <laughs> but I had to finish it because it just said, I just see it. I just see it. So then I, this antenna becomes original in a book. This first 50 book, that actually improvised drawing, finished right on the spot. But then it changed. There's this book side that already, what's in there already changed. Yes. Yes. Because yes. I want to, and at the end, I'm the one who orchestrate everything. I'm the one who conductor finishing my piece to my piece, even though there I involve other people's energies. And this work is done by like one to two, one to eight, some of them on my own. So they bring a different energy, surprise energy to my work. And so this was just created, matter of fact, just a few days ago. Uh, uh, and I'm really happy with it because I wanted it to be connected to Vlad, not only here in her glowing energy from my essence of literally glowing energy, but I want her body to be connected. And that's why the female body's here and they're connected to Vlad all around. Then my roots are going home into the career. So, what needs to be clear to the audience is that even these works are both abstract, but they are also narrative figurative pieces. Yes. There are entire choreographic stories within these seemingly abstract pieces. Now, clear that one, you can clearly see a female figure. In the middle piece, other than the yin yang, somebody just briefly glancing may miss initially yes. all of the narrative figurative components that are telling these evolving stories. And that I find fascinating about your work is that you you do clearly purely figurative work, you do purely abstract work, but you do these pieces where you very comfortably Sit in both worlds. Yeah, I think Very that, I think that God's hard to drawing. I was doing eyelash. Yeah, then yeah, I yeah, just, yeah. Then I pencil circle. I want a circle to be more perfect. Then I just continued. I didn't even draw that one because I simply I didn't have time to deliver. Now that's a that leads me to the, the question that I've come to now understand, which I didn't know a while ago that you are comfortable with taking a piece and looking at it after it's on the wall and saying, I'm going to change something. And you are OK with evolving your art. Always. That, well, I, I, I think about that. I, a, lot of artists are, a lot of artists are, would never do that. No. That's, tell us about this. Uh, uh, like this piece, actually, I have a picture of you when you first visit my studios in a process. The left side of the face wasn't there, this circle of life. Again, if you... Yeah, the circle of the left side wasn't there, constellation wasn't there. But it was, uh, I finished it for the International Women's Day exhibition here. And I want to debut my new work, and which I started in 2018, May 2018. And when you visited, I took picture with you with the unfinished piece, which you have. And then uh, by the time March, December of 2019, my nephew passed away. He was a little bit of uh, uh, diabetes. We didn't realize that he had pneumonia and he passed away. So before everybody realized the pandemic, my whole family went to a funeral in the church. Korean community is very People big in the church. Yeah, yeah. And we all went to church and uh, his parents didn't have enough time, came in the screen in the church. And that's when I actually submitted some abstract energy art that day when I came to New York and I actually made a, a dead body of rising up, of energy rising up. And that's when I decided to add a figure without a face on the left with the, because of a face is now gone, but they are mm -hmm. moving to the stars, which is emotionally and even in the cave, in, in, in sense, Kate was very sick. And when I finished that painting, actually right before I delivered the paintings, also was Kate that I was expecting Kate to come to see my work with you. Yeah. Traveling to New York. Never, and never my was nephew, to be. Yeah. Kate was very sick. It was all the uncertainty that I decided to realize that 
the circle of life should include the constellation of that we are no different. We are just nature and we are circle of life. We are no different than season and a plant that will rise up and be the ashes and the weed and be in the sky. Beautiful. In a lot of your figurative work, there is clearly a celebration of nature and there are some recurring motifs, the butterfly, the seahorse, the fruit that's been cut open, either a pomegranate or an apple. Um, how do you see the relationship between the natural world and our physical city, urban, electronic, being recorded, you know, digitally, this, this world that, that humans have created within this nature? Well, I actually, um, my work is very intimate and personal. And first of all, I'm not that great in high tech even though I am up there posting all yeah, the stuff. Sure. And I, I always never was drawn to impersonal stuff. And matter of fact, my landscape itself, I can draw so well and the buildings and other things, but it didn't have an emotion. At some point that I realized that emotion is the what makes us alive. That's great. And then when I figured it out in this state, that my new work that getting a lot of attention is I when I realize emotion is just an energy, it's a charged energy, is the emotions. So when I my beginning challenge of doing a physical artwork was I want to just express a state of emotions. And when butterfly came, before I speak of a butterfly, why the butterfly came was there was a little paperwork, an emetic void of a paperwork. When I did really well, uh, when I went to, uh, when I restarted artwork, when I wanted to draw you and draw you, and I realized I could draw 10 different ways, mm -hmm. then, I, then I came up with that style for a while. Then someone sent me, uh, at the, I went to Armory Show in I think 2007, right? I'm not so sure. She sent me an email that, they were very stone-faced. That's the only time I didn't know what I was doing. I was expressing myself, inner self, without realizing what I was expressing, and I was in a very happy place. So it was a, just a woman, a photographer, I think she was in gallery business, kind of got me into tears. And, and it was just something that she wrote to me it was just very moving. And so I said to myself, when I came to New York, and I used to be dressed up like this, and fashion designer. Matter of fact, some people call me Hollywood Lightly of the <laughs> Tiffany character, go to parties all the time, and dress well, and be pretty young, and, and being fashion designer. And now I'm like locked and emotionally creating stone face. And I just stuck over there after her email. I stuck, and I said, I am gonna go back to where I was, and I was a very sensuous, and I was playing around in New York City, and I'm gonna go that person. So I intentionally, my very first painting I made was black and white of that gilded cage, mm -hmm. and with the tear dropping, like whether I should break that cage and break the relationship, and I was in a relationship that I wasn't very unhappy. I couldn't create and was not supportive. And so I decided to break that cage. The first thing I told my friend was, I should Put myself in a cage, I should make a drawing. We're hopping around the Chelsea Gallery. And I did that from live models. I went, I packed up, I went to Art Studio League where models were very expensive, a lot of expert teachers there. And I made with this girl and in a cage. I took the bird cage uh, uh, in mine with me and I just drew the model. I told her to pose a certain way. One of my mentors, his name's Ronnie Lenfield, he knows how I draw very unique and differently. So he's the abstract class, he had me set model the way I want to. So I'll set a certain way and I'll just put her in the cage. And when I came home, I looked at that painting and I started I crying. Yeah. And then I, I just, I didn't like myself, I was. But that's what art can do. Art allows you to take your emotions and put them on a canvas. Now I, I may be wrong, but I always thought the painting next to it is the same person who's then been free. Is that right? Much or? later, yeah, much later. But it is the same because 
the the butterfly on the head. No, I just put the, the uh, same butterfly. Yeah. She was different. I made her that day three different ways. Mm -hmm. It's not here, but I made her abstract. I will turn around to the abstract, even for a model, I'll turn around five minutes. Abstract takes only five minutes. Five minutes, I'll go back and do uh, okay. realistic. So I was always doing abstracts and uh, realistic. That's great. But so, I always thought those were a pair, those two paintings, uh, almost it, in a sense, before and after. It's a more of a timing. Mm -hmm. It was timing because that piece was then done uh, almost a decade later after a pandemic. I had to close my studio. I was sick. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, I had a show here and I got a COVID earlier. And, and that got me really worried and I didn't able to uh, stay in my place. Even though I packed my art supply, I was very sick for a while. And then um, it's a time period. When I paint something, you can tell by time period because I will carry on similar images mm -hmm. to one to next. So timing factor, uh, the coronavirus is all arising, and that was after one year, and I realized that I am so, the part of maybe I'm also painting all this emotional stuff because I realize when I'm emotionally crippled, I can't really paint sometimes. Or when I'm emotionally so like devastated that I must express myself in some way. If my nose was bleeding because New York City was drowning in a sandy yeah. storm, I made a sketches of a, a, a Chrysler building falling and floating because I woke up in a building where garbage was floating outside of uh, my apartment and mm -hmm. crane fell down when Whitney Museum was building up in 2012. Mm -hmm. I know all my paintings by the years and dates because of uh, my emotions where it was. They're so, your stories. These are your stories. Some people write novels. You. Right yeah, I, when, when my stories. feelings are overflowed, I uh, pain. But also, I found myself in that particular painting I wrote about was that when you are in a fear, I think of fear that I cannot create. Mm -hmm. When the uh, COVID, with the sickness and the fear, and all my paintings are stacked up, and without a studio, I realized I couldn't paint. I have no interest in paint. I was just like become a hermit, and if I tell people I become a hermit, nobody will believe me because I'm very outgoing person yeah, yeah. all the time. But I actually was like a hermit for a year. Mm -hmm. Then I made that painting when One Art Space invited me to She's 2021 and the uh, uh, um, International Women's Exhibition in the March. This was one of those earliest gallery who opened uh, despite when everybody was closed down. And so I, that was during COVID. During the COVID, yeah, yeah the so, 2020 yeah, March, earlier this year, March, earlier okay. this year okay. then I started crying and I started looking for studio and get out mm -hmm. because I realized that I was dying again. So each time that I made it, uh, a gilded cage, I was each time when I was dying that I think I, I reproduced in the colors, but also with COVID virus all over me. And I was in a beautiful place in the country and locked in, and that's why there's gold gilded cage. Those are little dots of rising coronavirus all over me. Oh, that's a okay. So that I didn't. That I, I wouldn't have known. It's, I, I it's, a, it's a isolation. Like no, okay. it's an isolation. Uh -huh. You see the little dots rising. Just you just a virus are everywhere. And yes. how many people uh, relationship broken? They are married, and all these things are happening. That piece is, uh, is from pandemic piece. So then the painting next to it is earlier. It was done earlier, I never finished it, mm -hmm. but I finished it uh, uh, recently mm -hmm. and before the photographer came. So the always full moon was there and yeah. she didn't have a butterfly. Uh -huh. And that butterfly... Me, the two of them together are... Yeah, because I had carried that butterfly because timing was similar, mm -hmm. I carried that butterfly over here. Now, okay, okay. There's another example of you taking a, a work and having other work in a sense influence it and you revisit that work. Yes, I will always, you will see the elements I will favor and then it will appear it's more tiny. Yeah. Like seahorse appeared when I travel in seahorse in my uh, US, which I started a met metaphysical encounter is where I invite, this one I did by myself mm -hmm. after I traveled to uh, Marbella, Spain. 
in Ukraine. I was in bikini for like two weeks on the beach. And men was luring me with uh, offering all kinds of stuff. And my ex was calling me another line. And that's by the love of there that how many, all of us, you have one luring in front of you and guy with the smoking cigars and offering all kinds of stuff. Yeah, he's great. I love the guy with the cigars. And when Ray is blowing the air, so you know yeah. where. Yeah. So what he oh, wants, yeah. what man wants, one thing. Oh, yeah. And then uh, and she, her face slowly turned to the newness. In the human nature, we like the newness, and there's our, the tangled in the hair. Mm -hmm. The man tangles in hair that you, and then there's eyelash comes, and he's, it's actually, he's blowing the sperm over there. You see that, when you see the eyelash, it means there's a, a energy in there, soul is in there. That's but, right. That's right. Yeah, that's when first time seahorse tail because I was so much in the beach on the bikini every day. That's when a seahorse. But I also love the seahorse have a the, the very elegance of lips of pouch, mm -hmm. the posture's elegance, and yeah. then I discover after that seahorse get males get pregnant. Right. So yeah. that's yeah. when I had a torn the rotator cuff anniversary of one year. I made a seahorse painting over there, also by myself. Yeah, where over there? Uh, over there, with the, because a seahorse, the only creature with pregnant ma males can deliver the baby, and I love that. So I embrace that idea. I like to see you guys get pregnant and deliver the baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and 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 another idea. Speaking of that, and cloud has recently, I just did a cloud made it look like dolphin. Because dolphin, while I was yes, changing yes. this work, this this dolphin came. I don't know if you, I don't know if you can see, but uh, this dolphin came over here. Because dolphin has a lot of human uh, similarity and very smart, and I like things that are very playful. So in my his drawing was involved with Diago and friends when I they first invited me to the studio, and then everybody came to my studio, and. And they drew, and there was a lot, everybody had their agenda. What you see in the book was guys screaming, pointing and screaming faces that I would make a certain way. And at the end of the piece, I didn't want that piece. I didn't want that screaming face pointing finger at somebody. So I, this whole bottom has changed. And finishing piece from that, what's in the book was already changed. Which is great. Yes. And that, when I see the dolphin, I, changed it. Because of I made this cloud right after that, it has a cloud, now it has a face of growth in its mouth, which I love that curveness of a gentle, uh, so that's going to be my cloud forward. When I, how, how I work is that when something new comes out, it'll carry out to next until I'm bored with it or something else new excites you. And I, in the destroying process, I realized was well, this is a lot of new discovery came with this series of the metaphysical. I, I think this is I think because of what I invite to other people's energy, when your energy vibrates with mine, and I will orchestrate who goes first, and I give you a plan, like this paper, I ask you to draw your energy of this moment in the line. So talk more about that. So you have people, you invite people to come to your studio? Yes. And you draw together, yes. and then I give them a pen. I give an ink pen and sharpie. Only two things: they're not knowing by sir, ink pen and sharpie. And I ask them to uh, to draw a line. I will decide to go who go first. Speaking of that, I don't know if you can see it way back. Uh, no, no, I don't think you can. No, yeah, no. way back piece. Maybe we can flip in the book. Uh, so uh, this piece, because we have all the audience who participated in this gallery at the second, this piece over here, it's called Masculine Dominance. The gallery owner, Dan, actually, and a very business manager, Carlos was videotaping, three of them came to my studio for first time to visit. So I said, okay, let's do this energy art, because this, I, what I realized is a new, process. This process what made me realize is how human relationship and even relationship with people is the same way. 
when I'm improvising something is new, I'm determined to finish right there and then. And that's what I did in my post before probably they got home, I'm not so sure. But he drew peanuts over there. So I actually, the Carlos got really embarrassed. He tried to like erase his penises, you know, over here and erase my in, in the No, in my studio and uh, uh, okay. in a drawing. So drawing doesn't have detail. It's in the book actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First 50 copies is gonna be original drawing. And Carlos tried to erase it, all these things. And then May put some stuff in here. And then he actually, Dan, what Dan wanted to say, he want to spread the seed all over the world. That's what he said. But I guess his Dan's son was drawing a lot of penises and got in trouble at school. So you've added to the same too. Yeah. This is right. This is amazing. Dan, say this something about your, 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 why you drew the penis in the middle of a smack of the, which you shocked me. I didn't know what to do with that penis because I didn't expect somebody will draw a penis in the middle of a page. I never shared a painting. <laughs> you know, and I, I, I wish I, I like had, you know? Some people are collaborating on one painting or two paintings. It's an amazing thing. See, this is one of the things that I think people really need to know about you. So you're an artist, but you're also a producer of an art piece. Yes, yes. So that's, that's not very common. But he shot me with the penis. I didn't know what to do with it. So whole painting, the creationists became try to erasing everything. Carlos begin to try to erase it. So normally, if you see my old other work, there's no scribble marks. What? Exactly. Sure. Why? Yeah, erase sure. it. No, that's that's. And I mean. thought about it getting erased it, and when I made the final piece, and I realized, but the whole painting was based on erasing the penis. So what it comes is like a raw shot deck, mm -hmm. and you can kind of mentally guide through this whole whole experience. It's it's like painting performance art. It's it really so is. It's a kind of performance art where you make a piece, but then because there are other people that you allow into your world, which you may accept or reject what they do, Yes. but you've, you're creating a performance as a canvas and then deciding at the end as an editor, Yes, yes. What, I edit. what stays Wait, and I, what doesn't. Uh, yes. This is, I, I've seen a lot of painting. I, there aren't a lot of people that do yeah. that. Yes. So even for me, very, very even for me, people. I am actually discovering the process. Yeah. In discovering this process, what I realize is male energies. I have done drawing with uh, gay guys. Mm -hmm. In a, a, It was a, a Solomon Gallery, one of the openings, some guy named Matthias. Then they all came to my studio, and after hours we came, and there was three gay guys came, and their line was just stabbing, zigzagging, crossing it. Then I did another drawing, saying, just sometimes I do simultaneously too. What I, once I realized that this male energy, male, female energy was different, that's when Triangular was born, decided that's gonna be male energies, and a horn is gonna be male energies circular energies because in doing this uh, since May, I discover woman's energies when you talk about it, even when you talk, we move like this and guys will go like this. Mm -hmm. And so even these figures, you can see always female have a long eyelashes, male maybe have a shorter eyelash, which I've done that even before, but it's more accentuated in angular versus the curved line. Mm -hmm. And, and, and here, and which then later on my sister told me, she brought me, he goes, you're not the first one who discovered that. He goes, Klimp and a kiss. He says he made a rectangular, which I didn't know that. I discovered through my paintings yeah, I mean, and find out his himself. own body, he made a square in that kiss. Woman's body, a circular, which I never knew that. Well, that's true though, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 only through this. So I found out about a lot of things. A human relationship actually relates to art. Like all this, all this ones are here because it was new. 
The newness is exciting, like the infatuation life. I was determined to finish everything. And one of the huge examples is this after hour. If you see the beginning of this work, I don't know if we can flip the page, May, if you can show. After hour, they were pretty wasted. And these people have a testosterone energy for a lot of beautiful people. If you look through my Instagram, I can say who they are, but there's eight people more came in. And they were like, like just like scribbling like this. Is like this in your studio? In my studio, yes. because after bar was closed 4 a.m. Yes. in West Village. And this was just a tangled hair, and this is like, like circling like this. And I says, let me stop and I'll go intervene. And I'll draw some mark. And then I'll let them go on again. They will do some crazy marks again. That just challenges me whether I could do this or not. So this is like so uh, maybe you can zero in on that. So this was, and show everybody that, what they drew was this crazy energy of wasted, intoxicated energy of a male testosterone drawing this. And you can see it and maybe also show to them. Then, and uh, so, in uh, let me show to them. So this work, this work, it was like this. You see, everybody see this? They were like trying, this is a 4.30 4 a.m. in the morning after bar closed, it's called after hours. So I said, let me intervene. And so I drew some points, you know, the, this eyes and, and yin and yang and then balance. Then I made this mark and let the next person carry on. I will always select who goes next when, you know, uh, but when the line starts and finish and I ask him to just not to go back, if they go back, I'm going to throw that out. So they don't go back. They leave a permanent mark of that energy of that second and move on to I just take back. So my finished piece of this artwork is... So the second stage when I, I sometimes I do take a picture in the process, there's a lot of evil energies here at the bottom. But my paintings are not evil. I don't like to watch a scary movie. I like to be very playful things. So I had to get rid of this scary face because you just, you can see the monster's face upside down screaming all over the place. So I got rid of this one. And so in a final artwork was like this. This is in the book. So in a way, this first 50 books is going to be even special because very soon this one's going to put it in. So in this tangled hair, I also didn't want to put that tangled hair, but I realized without the scribbling, how can you tell that madness of energies of that night? So I decided to put scribbles in selectively yet but not all the way like this original this original sketch when i ever exhibit again i will show this finished piece and this two other piece this is one of the example was that how when something is new you determine to make it but now if somebody did this i might toss it out mm -hmm. because now i've done enough it's not a new enough and that goes the same for the relationship in a human relationship that's what i realized so this is one of the examples that I changed it. And actually, I finished this in the back of the uh, alternative parking in New York. <laughs> I was finishing the dot, what I should do with. When you have a, a speed, when you have to finish things in speed, you have no time to think. That's when you need the skill. And, and I just finished that right here. But this energy over here was, as you can clearly see, then I didn't want people to feel it and too much screaming, screaming energy is going all around. So this is one of those examples that is madness that I can create it and, and finish peace to something that I want. Yet, you can tell this work is a very noisy compared to this work. Compared to this work, I only did with a one-to-one -one person. This is one-to-one, one to, one. One to one eight. To one meaning you and Me and someone else. else. Yeah. Me and someone else. He had a one curve line. But the, the, this process is so interesting because I invite the other energies. You can see this to seahorse. Uh, you can tell still a lot of elements are more carried. Wow. 
But when there, I invite the other one to other, like one of you to start energy because your energy mark is the initiate guiding everything. I don't know what to expect. I can only guide, intervene in between to make sure it becomes an art, not the piece of scribble. But this was one of the good examples that will blow everyone's mind how scribble can become an art. Because of that, I was in right state and I was determined to make it something. Right? So, um, they are posted actually in Instagram who were there. They were there with, I will always take a picture with them. And they were international people. So that's how uh, some of this thing process works. I, I think my, my recommendation, or what, I mean, what do I know? But my recommendation is that the more people know about this aspect, because to me, what you're doing is you're combining sort of like, here we are in, in New York, decades and decades ago, Alan Capro created the happenings. Um, he then went to San Diego and became a professor and stuff like that, but he created this whole art movement that was influenced by Fluxus and influenced by all of these modernist New York tendencies. And then performance art happened where visual artists started using their bodies to create art. What you're doing is you're bringing it back to the canvas. Yeah, so energy it's, it's, it's And I don't know if you have a name for what you do, but you need a name for what you do because is I, it, I don't it know. Is it maybe you know the, uh, is it movement? If, uh, because it's so new, it's I don't new. have a name. It's, I think it's, it's performance art painting. But I don't know if that's a name that would stick, but it's by bringing Maybe in... Maybe we should all collaborate. You, you collaborate, but you're still the director, the producer, yes. and it's your art piece. But um, it's not just a painting. Yes. It's, 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 it's almost a kind of theater the, 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 what I do, What I do is I freeze those energy of the moments. My one word the definition of this artwork is that Freeze the energy of the moment. However, I would alter it later because I don't want a screaming faces that character didn't belong that Diago knows that one guy. Right, you're the director and the editor. And which you, I will get rid of it you much make later. The yeah. But in that work, which I will show to you when he's videotaped, that I would like to actually have him included. It's, it's uh, going from the beginning. I want to kind of compare to with the real painting when, and everybody can see it. So in this uh, midnight energy was with uh, a, a lover I was only seeing after midnight. And when I discovered this accidentally, which I did before, but I was maybe not ready. And I had a conflict with a very big uh, word icon mm -hmm. when I had a show in 2016, as you know. And uh, when he, he says, uh, I want to carry this kind of art and that kind of think about that, about it. but I also did a, enough, I was ready to evolve. It just, it's everything is about timing and energy. Energy is everything. And timing precedes energy, but energy is everything. When that's when I realized and I decided that that energy should be capturing my art. I think some people say Rembrandt is very good in uh, capturing people's essence. And I was always good at keep capturing people's essence, whether I draw you in spot, I draw you 10 different ways. One thing I realized that I am actually really good at it is capturing people's essence. And that I carry to the abstract, where I invite other people's energy to start. So it becomes something totally surprising, excites me, because if I do by myself, they're predictable. But when the other people comes and leave the mark, that just challenges me to go to the different way. So in this one, I intentionally invite somebody, somebody was meaningful to me, and I ask him, this is what I'm doing. And my first piece, even though it's not good, there's something really interesting processes happening. I would like to do this with you, more meaningful person. I remember I tried to take a drawing paper and do it with you when I, earlier on, and Kate was not well and, and you didn't have a time. Remember, yeah. I wanted to do this. Like, this is my new idea and I want to do this. You didn't see anyone. If you saw this, you might have done it. <laughs> but you didn't know what I wanted to do. And I wanted to do energy art. And you didn't, uh, you didn't do it with me. 
But you, you need you need people need to know this. this yeah. So he drew S curve. Because once he knew he wanted to be, I want to be, I want to make this work. I want to do right on the spot, do well. So he made his one S curve, and I kind of put his initial in there. I used to put the initials of people in there, and some way incorporate it. And then, so it's a beginning piece was like this. Then I finished that from here. Then it goes on to uh, where's it next? Then it goes on to this circle of life. When I met this person also, again, it was a late at night, and I, he was dressed very stylish. I found out his, his father was teaching the art class in Brooklyn. So when he approached me, I said, I would like to, this is what I'm doing, and I'm actually very interested in doing this. I want to invite you for not to give you a wrong idea. You have to leave after, but uh, I'm a very challenged with the fact that your father teaching the uh, have a modeling session, he invited me to come. So I was even more challenged because he's come from art background. Mm -hmm. And so he drew one line and it was a little too stiff. So then I continued and this just came out and that just like that, it's just out of blue. Like almost it reminds the embryo and he finished, we finished it said, over here. Then that, oh, I'm sorry, this is, uh, then I finished with this. And with this idea got me realize that I could create the circles of life. This step for infinity of spiral shape is something it always appeared from even my college days work until now. You will see spirals, infinity of something about that spiral, that whirlpool of energy that I would do the breast. Remember in 2016 I was asking you about yes. whether I should do whole breast. I do often breasts in circular motions. Yes. If you I see later on now you see details, the circular motions you will see all the time in the spiral. And I never knew somebody says, yeah, they're like whirlpool of the spiral energy in your breasts. I didn't know that, which people tell me after like third eye. So this was from here. Then you can kind of see in a, this homies courier you already saw. And then uh, this, I didn't have it. Uh, what other one? Yeah, pretty much like that. So um, I did take a picture and I take a picture with people at the end. Like I have a picture of Dan and them in my studio holding that stage when we finish. Then by the time they got home. I'm sure that I, 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 I had my pants on the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's really interesting about this whole idea of energy, so yeah. Previously, Dan was at the Whitney, and he was um, dealing with his son, you know, drawing penises on his notebook at school and things like that. And then when he was at Whitney, and he saw a gift shop, and there was actually a postcard of like a famous artist who did, was it like a penis on like the Statue of Liberty or something like that? And Dan's like, wow, my son's a genius. <laughs> So I, I, I think like, and when he went over it, I think that was like in his mind that he was drawing that, yeah. But nobody ever draws smack up the middle of the paper penis. That threw me off. <laughs> but because of that, I actually, that painting I worked on in four days, but also because I haven't painted for a while and I made that uh, pandemic painting of the uh, uh, gilded cage and I was doing something different, but in some time in that, like in that particular of the earlier sketch, I don't know if we have an earlier sketch, maybe we did because I only took the photograph of your holding. It didn't have a lot of details. And there was crazy time and I want to have a seahorse. And even to the more break of that painting, let's talk about that artwork particularly. Uh, uh, the part of it uh, here, that like this lips wasn't even there, even in the book. This was created when I was finishing this. Another phase, just distract everything. However, I have a sperm swirling around, falling in there, and something else go in there because we, how can you spread the seed all over the world without those two elements together? So now that I say that, and people's gonna look close and they're gonna see something else in there. And there's, of course, there's the butterflies 
than the seahorse because of a continuation of all this. So when I paint also, I look at my other work, and sometimes I pick certain elements of that I like of the long feather, which ties together as well. Yeah, well you have things for sure. I and like you you have your own kind of hieroglyphics. There are certain things like like many good artists yeah. that recur. Yeah. That recur. And, and, and it's like hieroglyphics. Um the It'll stay with you. the yeah. the the seahorse, the yeah. Is the eyelashes even? Yes. Are, are things that become, they mean more than just what they are. They become. They're a representation of uh, yeah. each gender or, or their energies. Or, or But the butterfly, the butterfly came. If you look at that pomegranate, it's called yeah. Circle of Life. There's a female butterfly. When I first made that butterfly, uh, right side butterfly with the lipstick on, uh, if you look very close, there's a female butterfly and male butterfly. They made together. They're not only infatuated and made together, but there's a lot of tears after. And a long term relationship. Butterflies and so, so many when I actually, when I was in the enigmatic void of that stone stage of that paperwork, I like kind of. I don't know, that's also a new style, kind of cubistic, but not really cubistic, somewhere in between that style. I actually wanted to have, uh, I actually wanted to <clears throat> travel somewhere and I need something to take me out while I was in the place. The butterfly was born to carry me to a fantasy places mm -hmm. when the stress was unbearable, when I was too, if you look at some of the painting and look at the title, Fantasy Escape, or different things, and I actually, I didn't go to see strength during that time, and I would paint, yes. you know? In well, that relationship, when I decided to break the monogamous relationship in that painting, cross the street from over there, I don't know if I should With the pomegranate, for example? Uh, pomegranate is, uh, is more different, I can point that out. Like oh, this, one, oh, okay. this one was when in a nine months and then he asked me about all this painting and I said, oh my God, I don't have enough oil painting. I went to like two hours, I just zoom it out the oil paintings. Like, so this is a skill comes out. Like those things are easy for me. I can just zoom it out in two hours and I could do. He was not interested in any of those, but he was interested in this one. And, and this one, I said, little love caused so much troubles. <laughs> I went to the model and it was, that day everything become a dark when yeah, I got caught. And there's a little love and halo there, all the birds came out and because I was just overwhelming amount of stress. And I will only, only tell my mentor, Lorani Lenfield, he's a color field painter and I'll tell him the story and he will guide me about life. And you know, then I said, this is what's going on. So let me just, you know, and then I have models sit in the front of the mirror and I just took the mirror off. And there's a little heart came out because that little bit of love in so much distress and I want to have some, you know, <laughs> halo came because I want to somewhere at the angel to protect me. And I would put myself in here to almost like surviving. Yeah. So before I was at this point, all this artwork, especially all this paperwork, even those are larger work, they are originally done, uh, except that a full moon one, I directly paint the model from the canvas. Yeah. You know, sometimes I do that, but most often I did in this paperwork. And those two large uh, work was a trans transported later to larger size, so I have original nice. painting yeah. with a lot more texture which I did from all the, I do from the model, whether I do some abstract mm -hmm. or in between, uh, an enigmatic void that they are done from live models. Because yes. like I said, I have 10 different way I drew. Matter of fact, I have some one day when the entire biography is done, they're gonna know the same models that I did so many different ways. And why not? Because I'm able to, and I have a uh, training to do it. Yes, yes. So, I, uh, so, that's what happened. So here, like, when I didn't want to come out from anywhere, there's a very distressful time when I hide in distress. And there was my way of hiding, and you can tell by the colors. And uh, people who come to my studio, not in here maybe, but they clearly, it's written in my bio about 
you can literally tell her time of changing. And I always sign my date, unlike other people. I noticed that you put the because month I put the, the year. No, sometimes I put the month, mostly I put year because I know how I change. I know what made me change. If you look at my website called things called metamorphosis, they are changing from enigmatic void. So you will see those change elements. It's You could see the dates are uh, pretty similar because of uh, their elements will pop out, uh, then disappear later on to something else. So they'll carry on for a while. So in that group of that paperwork, you will see uh, metamorphosis means you will have a lot of those images from uh, where I do their eyes. So not only that uh, seahorse keep appearing the different painting, I was already doing that. Uh, like you landed up the very first one and of their next two uh, after hours. Yes. Like like this one, you will see a lot of them having this this kind of a eyebrow shape in the back of different artwork because that will carry on to sensuous nature that group in the book. An earlier date, you can tell by my date because those elements will appear in in between crossing. Then later on, it just moved to different, uh, more focus on the different things. But I would, there's something I did that, but butterfly only came in tremendous amount of stress after I put myself in that cage. And I want to find some way, clean on to something to take me somewhere while I was in that place that to survive. So that's how butterfly came because butterfly only flies out to sunny days and they are beautiful and they are like creatures and they fly to, what do they do? They fly to the flower to flowers and drink a nectar and that's what I want to be. I didn't want to be where I was. So the, so butterfly just, it actually meant, meant a lot because it carried me through to happier place. And they are still here. Most people think it's gone even in art decos. When my, another, uh, one of my favorite things is Art Deco style, mm -hmm. so... No, the butterflies on the head. Yeah, the butterfly, the, 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 the Art Deco has a lot of head needs, mm -hmm. and, and, and that is very heavily influenced in the Art Deco because oh, there's sure. elements that I love. And, and this particular painting, which a lot of, some gallery asked me to make a smaller piece and to, to, and, my visual inspiration when I went to Miami was a John Gotti in a Fianna, uh, a Fianna Hotel. That you know, John Gotti. That, that, that some somebody made that. That what's the name of the hotel? Uh, very. No, no, Fianna or F the, in Miami, the Argentinian some artist. Miami Beach, yeah. Yeah, Miami Beach, yeah. and and they had a huge painting of like they have a heart stabbing with the plants. You know the painting that the Fiona Hotel or something like that in Miami, it was a big artwork with a stabbing heart. And I says, I never want to stab the heart. It's you'll see a lot of a heart with a heart with a heart. A lot of my paintings, I didn't want to stab a heart, but the heart is where two people merge and miracles happen. Where I make a painting, where the beautiful songs are made and poetry are made. So if you look at it, two faces merging here, they're breathing from one heart. And the but means beginning, because that's when your love grows, when you feel this way. And this is the part where the reason that uh, the touch of the pink area means no matter how much that you lust for somebody or whatever, in the moment when you're touching, that electrifying, that energy goes through and shoots out, everything goes crazy, right? So that's why there's a little pinkish where her the fingers are touching and the touching the bottom of my heart and their face is merging but yet I'm still here with the butterfly and then this is this is when the miracles are made, musics are made, the whole world is created. That's why it's